Hello, I'm Rebecca Brady and I'm the producer of the GPRAS Summit and I'm here today with Patricia Tometz from Anvisa and Darius Jean Namju from Grenthal. On this panel today, we'll be covering Brazil and LATAM pharmaceutical regulations, global harmonisation and the impact of COVID-19 on regulation. Before we jump in, I think it'd be great to hear a little bit more about yourself, so um, about what you're doing and what you're working on. Patricia, I think we should we start with you. Yes, of course. Uh, well, my name is Patricia. I'm working for Anvisa, uh, the Brazilian Health Regulatory Agency. I'm working uh, on the General Office of Drug and Biological Products as assessor. And we are working hard in those uh, COVID-19 times, and that's it. And Darius, how about yourself? Yeah, my name is Darius. I'm a Global Regula Regulatory Affairs Lead uh, in my company. Um, I've joined the company back uh, 11 years back uh, by now, and I'm doing my current work kind of roughly five years. Um, we have several products in Brazil from our company, uh, working with local office there, but certainly I'm constant exchange with our local people on the situation in Brazil, especially now, certainly due to, to the COVID times. So it will be very interesting to discuss with you today. Great. Um, so I think as we're starting on Brazil, maybe we should first talk about some of the latest developments that have happened in Anvisa. And um, Patricia, as you work at Anvisa, could you kind of outline some of those? So uh, about COVID, we to 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 help in this this tough times, we. We look for in, in in the regulatory field, of course. We publish two results specifically for for COVID nineteen, specific for situations related to COVID nineteen, and those resolutions was to to help the the companies. One of them, uh, three for eight, is a prioritization resolution. Uh, for registration and post approval chains, and the companies that, that need to prioritize some some uh, request, uh, the, the the company can uh, uh, can submit um, a request for a visa, and we made a committee with experts from the general office of drugs, and we discussed these requests for prioritization and we uh, there is a, an evaluation if the drug is related to COVID-19 directly or indirectly for example in hospitalization cases and if necessary the company can present a commitment term for missing documents but the evaluation is case by case we are receiving a lot of requests for prioritization analysis and all those uh, those requests that we allowed, uh, they are being published in the website. I think we've lost you, Patricia. Um, while Patricia's coming back, Dari, does it have anything? No, the nurse of requests that we are prioritizing, big, big, big for it, yeah. And there is another resolution, 355, that is a resolution that um, suspended processual uh, deadlines for 120 days. We, we thought this, this was so important because, because sometimes the deadlines could, uh, could uh, be, sometimes no, deadlines are very important for the company yeah. and but in, in case of uh, registration and post approval chains specifically when when we we ask for uh, additional questions the company already have one, 120 days but if the company feels that uh, it, it won't be possible answer in this deadline this resolution 355 uh, allowed the company asked for more 120 days, and then this uh, we, we think that this will be a good um, 
action and a go to for the companies that need more time because we know that employees are working remotely as we are, right? And the production maybe can be uh, more slow and this is it. These are our main uh, strategies to deal with, with those uh, pandemic times. But Anvisa um, is open to schedule meetings. We are uh, with the companies every day by teams and, mm -hmm. and by other other streaming tools <clears throat> and we are we, we don't we, we don't stop working and we don't stop uh, we don't stop talking to the companies and we are trying to to help the possible so this is it and um Zara, does that kind of answer your questions with the latest developments in Anvisa or is there anything else you'd you'd want Patricia to kind of cover yeah, yeah, possibly I can add a little bit to that. Um, so certainly it's uh, from an industry perspective. Um, so what I have heard also about um, the feedback I received from our local team was clearly that they are um, very positive actually on the road of Anvisa in this uh, scenario. Um, and they have communicated that never before there has been such an open communication, common communication with, with the authority as is now. Uh, so that's, this was, I think, a very good sign. The dead leg extension definitely help a lot. Yeah, that's that's also what what I can confirm. It also heard about uh, the possibility of digital prescriptions, uh, which which I think is also a very good step to to make things easier because I think that's exactly what we need as industry at the moment to find some pragmatic solutions to, to the situation. I think so. and from there um, all the dramatic and very very bad effect of of the COVID. But I think from the corporation point of view, it's it's a good uh, step. Okay, great. And um, if we keep talking about um, requirements to Brazil, um, what do you feel, as from an industry point of view, what are kind of the key specific requirements that you have for going into Brazil, um, Darius? Yeah, yeah. That's also where I would uh, comment that 120 days is sometimes not enough for us in general, uh, because um, what, what we have seen, uh, and I think that's also something which is observed general industry, is that uh, and these are very specific requirements on the CMC part of the dossier, and analytical validation and all these kind of things, which certainly uh, can take a lot of time in case you need to repeat certain validations and, and these kind of, uh, so we go back to the lab, develop new methods and so on. So we had one case where uh, there's also already approved in Europe uh, it, um, and um, yeah, we had to develop really a new method because we got the feedback in the registration process and visa, yeah, your method is not acceptable for by our pharmacopoe and you really need to develop from scratch and you know that there's a lot of effort. So we, we did it and, and the, we got the approval, but that's really something extra spent uh, to, to make the product available in Brazil. So that, that would be for me the key challenges. Um, not so much so far, I would say, on the clinical part. I think there are other agencies which be, may be more critical. Yeah. Uh, but what, what we have seen um, also in meetings was that Anvisa is very keen on learning on, on new items. Uh, so we had, for example, very specific simulation uh, methodology for um, some, some uh, clinical trials and here Anvisa was Clearly, the feedback was not our regulation yet. We can't accept it now, but we can work together with you to make it acceptable. And I think that's a very good approach in, in this sense. And uh, so that, that's uh, what I would see as the very specifics of, of the agency from the industry point of view. Mm -hmm. and, um, Patricia, is there anything that you could add to that about what Anvisa are really looking for in, in your dossier applications and, and when companies are coming toward to you with regulatory questions? Um, uh, actually, <clears throat> the what are we what we are looking for is uh, to implement the ICI ICH guidelines as on this is uh, part of the the member right, and we we uh, we are working toward. The, the, those guidelines implementation because we thought that this will help the harmonization and it will be good for the industry and for the agencies, not only for multinational industry but also for national industry 
we think uh, that uh, we are we are in the in the uh, in, during we are in the process, right? We are implementing guidelines, mm -hmm. the CMC and security and and, and efficacy and security guidelines. And we think that it will be very helpful, and and we are open as as you said uh, for discussions and for uh, new approaches. Our our resolution for uh, synthetic drug registration, the resolution two hundred, is uh, is um, th this is in. in, in Sorry, I forgot. This is a uh, review. We are reviewing this resolution and we are talking about different pathways for registration for, for synthetic drugs. And I think this, uh, this strategy of harmonization will be a, a huge step for industry and for the agency. Mm -hmm. Um, as we sort of touched on harmonization there, I think that's a massive area that people are always talking about. Um, and some of the big questions that we're getting is, what do you think the next steps are to reach a point of global harmonization? Um, and then to add to that, what can industry be doing to help that process? Um, Darius, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. Yeah, um, so possibly I can first of all share concern on that. Uh, certainly, there's a certain concern that due to the COVID situation, some initiatives on the topic may be a little bit pushed back uh, because they may not have that priority um, uh, compared to COVID. So it's, that's one concern we have a little bit on that. Um, other than that, my big hope is actually um, that the digitalization will help a lot also on the harmonization as we are then more able to transfer electronic dossiers and, and have really the same structure for these dossiers. I think that's where really there may be some uh, possibility to still harmonize. And certainly where there is already a lot of harmonization ongoing and uh, I know that Brazil is also very active on that as a PICS member is on the, on the GMP area. Until now, uh, Brazil has a requirement to perform their own inspections for, for all the products. Uh, but there may be no opportunity as a PIXMA to also accept certain inspections by other countries because that also always has been a big hurdle for industry to have an appointment done with inspection area and visa need to come to the factory and so on. That's uh, uh, but that's not, certainly not a Brazil specific item. There are a lot of countries worldwide who would have that requirement. Russia introduced it only a couple of years back. Um, and uh, so that's one of the fields where I also would uh, hope for um, great harmonization. Um, where, uh, for example, there is a lot of initiative ongoing is on the field of bioequivalence. There is a lot of global convergence activities. I think we are seeing already some fruits of these activities. It's taking years because uh, it's a lot of political discussion around uh, as well and so on. But I think it's trending to, to the right direction. Yeah, so, but I would not um, be able to really give, give uh, let's say, a time frame until when some of these items could be solved. Yeah. But certainly the industry can help uh, with the associations uh, to bring in um, yeah, information from, from other territories where uh, certain things are already working and to convince uh, potential authorities on efficient processes that could be implemented. So I think that uh, could be our main uh, goal here, or our main, main input we could provide. Um, do, you, do you think that's the main way industry could be helping or is there anything else that you'd add to how industry can help towards global harmonization? Uh, I I, I think industry, yes, can help the harmonization and it's very important to work together, industry and the agencies. Yeah. Uh, we, we receive a lot of uh, questions and from associations, from industry associations mm -hmm. in Brazil and we, we always that we, uh, when we receive those questions and when we receive requests for meetings, for example, mm -hmm. we accept, we do meetings with the associations and we think that uh, all the feedback we, we receive, it's positive mm -hmm. and we try work with, mm -hmm. with, this, uh, with, with these uh, questions and improve, for example, about harmonization. 
uh, last year we implemented the CTV guideline mm -hmm. uh, in, in visa. It's not it's not mandatory yet, but we we notice that that uh, this impact a lot, and we receive a lot of questions and a lot of um, comments, and we are working for review. The, the CTD guideline uh, because of the, 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 the because of this conversation between the visa and the industry and the associations. So I think uh, work together is the key, right? Industry mm -hmm. and the industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with sort of global harmonization, some people were saying, is it first important to harmonize regions? So first have harmonization across, say, Latin America before aiming for the whole for the whole world. Um, do you agree with that being sort of a, a good strategy? Um, uh, Darius, I don't know if you have thoughts on that. Yeah, um, for me, uh, clearly, yes. It's, mm -hmm. it, would be, it would be a very good approach because, I mean, we have seen a uh, very good president, certainly in Europe. Uh, so, so I don't know, some decades back, we had also in Europe, every country, its own regulation. Um, mm -hmm partially contradicting each other and so on and so forth, very, uh, make it very hard for industry. Even today, um, we have topics where there is no uh, guidance available by the, by the EMA, um, and where you can then see, if you go for, for meetings with authorities, you will get, get, definitely get different opinions, different requirements. And for a development process, it is very tricky to handle for, for, for industry. Um, and so definitely um, the harmonization and the opportunity to today submit a product to EMA, have one assessment done is, is very, very good. Um, and uh, that's um, where certainly I would also see a certain cultural homogeneity. There are a lot of difference in Europe, but also certain communities. Uh, and so I think there uh, it was very good to find some compromises and to be able to put up common uh, rules, at least for Europe. Um, and I think that here a uh, region approach could be very helpful. Um, for me, I certainly cannot judge how different the cultures are in Latam and, and um, because, for example, Brazil has a different language already to, to most of the other countries. So maybe quite, quite different, uh, but uh, uh, in general, I think it would be a good approach. And Patricia, so Darius touches there on some interesting points about the, the cultural differences and the language differences within Latin America and the impact that could have on a regional harmonization. Um, what are your thoughts to that and how we could potentially still get harmonized in that in that region? Uh, I think uh, he's right. There are a lot of difference between the, the Latin America countries and we we uh, we have not no agreement yet in the region, but uh, in, in in events within the, the Latin America, there are always uh, initiatives we talk about about creating uh, this this um, this group requirement. But they are not solid initi uh, initiatives yet. But I think maybe it could be a good a good start. Mm -hmm. Although uh, although our steps, uh, our current steps are being for uh, ICAG harmonization, yeah. because this is what we we have uh, for uh, for now, right? This is. This is what happened now. Uh, our our position in ICH, and we thought that the, the discussions are global. And I think this is this is this is a step. This these are the steps we are uh, we are going through. Mm -hmm. And um, I think until we harmonize, people have lots of questions on um, how do they find the right local partners or, or, or get help locally um, with working in countries with Brazil. Darius, how did you, how did you do that with you working with Brazil and other regions? 
Yeah, um, possibly I can just depict the story we have, uh, how we have entered Brazil. Um, mm -hmm. I think maybe maybe interesting for others as well. Um, so um, we had so Grünenthal has generally a very long history in the Latin American region. Um, we have been one of the first companies in countries like Peru or so, but um, in Brazil uh, we did not enter for uh, since um, only some years ago. Um, and um, here we also discussed should we go via partner. So formerly we had a partner in other company, um, uh, but should we not create a company basically from scratch or should we buy another company or how would we deal with that? But at the end we really decided to go from, from zero basically um, and employing uh, just one person at the start who would then bring in the licenses you required, all these kind of things. And from there on building the whole infrastructure on, on, on our own. But certainly that means you have to have very dedicated people also in the human resource department who really can bring in the expertise to the different departments that you require. Um, in general, um, I would say, especially for LATAM, it should be advantages to really have your own people and not uh, depend on, on a partner company. Um, a partner company certainly may have also a very good local expertise. That's, that's not uh, my intention, what I want to say. But I think the personal relationships you will have with the agency people in LATAM, I think that's uh, very crucial. And that's much better if you have your own people on, on the ground. Uh, so just, just possibly it's not in Brazil, but I've been to an authority meeting in Peru, where uh, then our local person uh, when, when the authority people came in to, to the, to the uh, uh, building, she really knew everybody personally, I would say. And that's something you cannot have um, uh, substituted by any, any other, other thing. And that definitely helps uh, in get, getting your submissions up, um, yeah, done and so on. Yeah. So I think that's, uh, that's what my recommendation. Um, Trisha, anything you'd add to that? Uh, no, actually there, uh, with, uh, there are a lot of experienced companies in Brazil and with experience in regulatory subjects. And um, I think some of the, the questions that we also get is for people that are either new to Brazil or new to regulation in general, um, what is the starting steps to get you know up-to-date information? Where should these companies be going to get um, the information they need to, to prepare you know, successful dossiers and successful regulation plans. Um, Patricia, what, what would you advise for them to do? Uh, well, uh, in Brazil, for each class of drugs, we have uh, specific resolutions. Uh, we have uh, resolutions with the requirement for registration. We have a resolution for synthetic drugs. We have one resolution for biological products, radiopharmaceuticals, so in the in the Anvisa's website, all the all these informations um, are are there in the in the drug page. Unfortunately, there are uh, only few information in English. Yes, the, the, <laughs> this is very hard. But yeah. we are in touch with with our international uh, accessory, and this is this is a request, right? To, to translate the resolutions and the, the, there are some explanation of the process in our website for each uh, each class each drug class and we have um, a press office also and when when some resolution is reviewed and when some resolution is published we we put as news in the website and in Portuguese, it's so easy, but unfortunately, uh, there is a lot of work to translate those informations. But this uh, website is a, a very good uh, way to 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 stay to stay updated with with regulatory information from Anvisa. And I think Darius, did you add to that? Yes, yes, um, I fully agree to. Um, the topic of the translation, uh, because that makes it a bit dif difficult for somebody not uh, able to speak Portuguese. Um, but in general, I think the webpage is a really very good source. And also, you get information not only in the regulation, but also, for example, in case there's a public consultation, because you can comment on, on uh, new resolutions from the industry perspective to bring in your own perspective to that. And I think that's 
basically like, like it's done in Europe or, or at USFD as well, that you can really interact also when, when uh, resolutions are made. And I think that's, that's a very good process there behind. So I fully agree. So the web, web page is a good starting point in case then, I mean, still in a, in a submission, you can enter phases where you need some further input because a resolution can never cover everything. Yeah, and if you need then some specific details, um, as we discussed before, there's always a possibility to have meetings or sometimes they only also got uh, feedback by email, which also was helpful. So uh, there, there are possibilities, definitely. Um, so we're coming up on the half an hour, so um, I think we will begin to wrap up. Um, Patricia, is there anything you'd like to add about either, you know, regulations in Brazil or the COVID situation to sort of finish the panel today? Uh, I only want to to inform, reinforce that we are working uh, for uh, improve our communication and transparency, and we are uh, we put in the in the Visa website uh, our reports, our reports of the year, and our reports of of our actions in COVID nineteen. And we are always open to receive information and to give information by our emails and by the on this website. There are a lot of uh, there are some uh, places that the the people or industry industry can can make questions for us, and we are trying hard to improve our process. And same question, Darius. Yeah, uh, so basically I can only echo um, what uh, Patricia just said. Certainly, uh, also from the industry side, we are um, looking forward to further cooperate with you. Um, and uh, certainly we have seen clearly the improvements that, that the uh, agency has taken in the last years. Uh, when I started in regulatory, it was really very, very different situation uh, than what, what uh, we can have in the co cooperation, also the assessment level that we have seen of Anvisa in the recent years really increasing and developing. So that's, that's definitely very positive. And I would also conclude in wishing you all the best for the handling the COVID situation, because I think it's really a dramatic situation for Brazil as a country. Um, and here yeah, I would really um, like to wish you all the best uh, on, on that. Well, um, thank you very much, both of you, for joining us today, and um, thank you all for listening. Bye bye. All right, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.